Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday's Lunchtime with Pastor Shane. This is uh, be for Wednesday, March 17th. Uh, we are zeroing in uh, this week on the fifth Sunday in Lent, and our uh, theme for this week is From Death to Life. So kind of all of the readings and scriptures are centered around that. <clears throat> so we are uh, spending about the first 15 minutes or so here, give or take, together uh, to hear from scripture, uh, to have some time of prayer, to hear the reading or reflection for peace from other authors and theologians. And in all of that, what we are looking for is some word or phrase that suddenly kind of our, <clears throat> our heart is set ablaze. And that would be a sign that the Holy Spirit is uh, speaking to us about that. So make sure you have a journal nearby, a piece of paper, something you can jot those words or phrases down. And that is, will be what you meditate on as we go into our alone time uh, with God. So uh, here goes from another uh, little snippet from the world's greatest collection of church jokes. Uh, this one is called Laughter. A small girl was reprimanded by her mother for giggling during prayer. It's okay, Mom, she explained. I was just sharing a joke with God. Dennis began to fall out a tree and cried out, Lord, save me, save me. There was a pause, and then he said, Never mind, Lord. My pants just got caught on a branch. <laughs> well, sometimes these jokes are amusing. Sometimes they're downright funny, and sometimes they're a little bit corny, but uh, it's a great way to start off. So in addition to that, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer as we invite the Holy Spirit into our time together. Almighty God, we once again come to you today and ask you to renew our spirits, to draw us to yourself. We want to be obedient to you today and ask that as we obey the work that you have for us to do, it would be a, a delight to us that we would have such love, your love in us and flowing through us that it would make all of our obedience seem sweet. We ask that you would help us to serve you with cheerfulness and gladness like that of children, delighting ourselves in you and rejoicing in all that is, uh, or all that brings honor and glory to your name. And it is in Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Well, as you know, our psalm for this uh, week comes from Psalm 32. So I would ask you to, uh, to go ahead and turn there. The Psalm 32 and whatever you are using uh, for a Bible. I'm going to read this from the voice translation. They have a little uh, uh, introduction at the beginning of this. I'll go ahead and read to you. It says, uh, a contemplative song of David. The Psalms celebrate God's forgiveness that comes through confession and repentance. Some interpreters link this psalm to David's sin with Bathsheba after Nathan had exposed his transgression. But the king certainly had other failings. Even if we do not associate this psalm with any personal transgression by David, it serves well as a model confession for those who are painfully aware of their sin. So here goes from the voice translation. How happy is the one whose wrongs are forgiven whose sin is hidden from sight. How happy is the person whose sin the eternal will not take into account. How happy are those who no longer lie to themselves or others. When I refused to admit my wrongs, I was miserable, moaning and complaining all day long, so that even my bones felt brittle. Day and night, your hand kept pressing on me. My strength dried up like water in the summer heat. You wore me down. When I finally saw my own lies, I owned up to my sins before you, and I did not try to hide my evil deeds from you. I said to myself, I'll admit all my sins to the eternal, and you lifted and carried away the guilt of my sin. So let all who are devoted to you speak honestly to you now, while you are still listening. For then when the floods come, surely the rushing water will not even reach them. You are my hiding place. You will keep me out of trouble and envelop me with songs that remind me I am free. I will teach you and tell you the way to go and how to get there. I will give you good counsel 
and I will watch over you. But don't be stubborn and stupid like horses and mules who, if not reined by leather and metal, will run wild, ignoring their masters. Tormented and empty are wicked and destructive people, but the one who trusts in the eternal is wrapped tightly in his gracious love. Express your joy. Be happy in him, you who are good and true. Go ahead, shout and rejoice aloud, <clears throat> you whose hearts are honest and straightforward. I like reading the uh, same scripture verse in all these different translations. It's interesting to see uh, the different uh, ways that they uh, interpret that scripture in that particular translation. And sometimes it kind of helps bring a little bit of clarity. It gives us a little bit more to chew on or something else to think about in the way that they uh, translated that particular section of scripture. Well, our uh, scripture reading for today comes from the New Testament book of Romans. We're going to go to Romans chapter 1 and read the first seven verses and then verses 16 and 17. So it's kind of a split verse. Uh, so this is Paul's letter to the Romans. And I'll be reading it from the New Living Translation. This letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach his good news. God promised this good news long ago through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The good news is about his son. In his earthly life, he was born into King David's family line. And he was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them, so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name. And you are included among those Gentiles who have been called to belong to Christ Jesus. I am writing to all of you in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be his own holy people. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. So those last couple of verses were verses 16 and 17 that we jumped to. And uh, yeah, I really like the 17. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. It's accomplished from start to finish by faith. It is through faith that a righteous person has life. So we uh, talked uh, Sunday about how we are saved by grace. That is the gift of salvation from God. But this faith, this through faith, that is the channel through which uh, we uh, receive that salvation. But it's uh, salvation isn't received in our own power, by our own works, or our own intellect. Well, the reading for reflection uh, today, and uh, by the way, I hope that something out of there maybe caught your eye. I kind of share a little bit about what uh, caught mine, but uh, write it, write it down, and be ready to uh, to meditate on that. Uh, the the reading for reflection comes from the God who comes by Carlo Corretto, and uh, we're going to. This is a little bit longer than most, uh, so uh, we'll be at this one a little bit longer than usual, but some good stuff here. So. Only very late do we learn the price of the risk of believing, because only very late do we face up to the idea of death. This is what is difficult. Believing truly means dying, dying to everything, to our reasoning, to our plans, to our past, to our childhood dreams, to our attachment to earth, and sometimes even to the sunlight as at the moment of our physical death. That is why faith is so difficult. It is so difficult to hear from Jesus a cry of anguish for us and our difficulties in believing. Oh, if only you could believe. Because not even he can take our place in the leap of faith. It is up to us. 
It is like dying. It is up to us, and no one is able to take our place. This mature act of faith is terribly, uniquely personal. Its risk involves us down to the core. The truest and greatest prototype of this act of faith that we, as the people of God, possess is the biblical account of the trial of Abraham. God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. It comes from Genesis 22, 2. That is a leap of pure faith proposed to Abraham. It is a personal act, and it is an act of death. Without love, it is impossible to understand such a proposal. On the contrary, it is scandalous. But for anyone who loves, seeing God wrapped round the colossal figure of this patriarch, alone in the desert beside his tent, no, that is no scandal, but quite the contrary. God wants to communicate with the depths of Abraham's being and tear him from himself and his involvement with his own problems, which are like self-centered possessions. He wants to make this creature of his more his, this man who is destined not for the tents of earth, but for those of heaven. So God asks of him an absurd, an absurd trial, as love is absurd for anyone who does not live it, but as true and relentless as love for anyone who possesses it. Take your son, Genesis 22, 2. I believe that at dawn that morning, the angels from every corner of heaven were busy preparing the mountain on which a man was about to carry out such a tragic and radical rite of love. I believe that at sunrise on that eastern morning, the space around Abraham was quilted by the invisible eyes of all who had died before him, wanting to see what the ending would be. What a drama was in the poor heart of that man. God had asked the supreme sacrifice. If Abraham had had to turn the knife on himself, it would have been easier. An act of pure faith is the death of what we love most, so it may be offered to the loved one because only love is stronger than death. At the ultimate moment of trial, when we try to pierce the invisible, with the sharpened spear of every possibility we can find, we realize that the three theological virtues, faith, hope, and charity, are really only one. And they have such a power of penetration that they could disrupt the entire universe. On Mount Moriah, in the trial of Abraham, humankind embraced God as never before. The experience of this embrace reverberates through the religious history of the world as an epic of a love greater than our endless frailty. Well, again, that is from The God Who Comes by Carlo Coretto. So those are some words uh, to chew on uh, from the author and uh, another author and theologian as we uh, think about this move from death to life and the need to sacrifice uh, our own life, everything uh, that we want and desire or dream about. Um, in order to find that true love of God and, and uh, to come to him in, in uh, full surrender. Well, let's uh, now go to the Lord in prayer uh, as each day. I know we have people and uh, things we want to lift up to him, and then I'll close this out. Father God, we thank you so much for this time together, how good and pleasant it is as we come together in unity as brothers and sisters in Christ to seek your face. And you promise that those of us who seek you with all of our heart will find you. And uh, that's with all of our being. Everything that we are uh, wants you and more of you. And that is why we are here today. Lord, I know that we are probably few. Uh, but we are blessed uh, for taking this uh, time and sacrificing uh, something as little as time, uh, time spent uh, that uh, we could be off uh, spending on ourselves or something else uh, we are here spending with you. So we pray for your blessing upon our time together as we go into that silent time to meditate, 
to hear from your still small voice and your Holy Spirit. Lord, we lift up all of those who are burdened today uh, with something uh, on their heart, mind, or soul. You know that need. You know every need that we have. We pray for those uh, and rejoice with those who are rejoicing today. They may be celebrating an anniversary or a birthday or some other uh, joy or praise that is going on in their life, something that went well. and They're giving credit to you, and we want to give credit to you with them as we bring honor and glory to your name. And thank you for this gift of life and the blessings that we uh, receive each and every day. So thank you, Lord. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Okay, so uh, we have the third verse of this hymn from Charles Wesley. O love divine, what hast thou done? And it reads like this. Behold him, all ye that pass by, the bleeding prince of life and peace. Come, sinners, see your Savior die, and say, was ever grief like his? Come, feel with me his blood applied. My Lord, my love is crucified. Um, so there we uh, have... Uh, the third verse of that hymn, and uh, that is the last verse of that hymn, so we will just kind of read through the whole thing the next couple of days. But here now this benediction as we go our separate ways today and go into our quiet time uh, with God. Be bound to Christ for this day and always. Amen and amen. And once again, thank you so much for joining me today, and we will see you right back here tomorrow. Until then, blessings on you.